Boom. All right. <clears throat> well, I have the joy today of connecting with one of my dearest friends in Israel, David Nakrutman, who uh, amazingly, the first and only Orthodox Jew to graduate from Oral Roberts University. David, really quickly, why would an Orthodox Jew go to ORU uh, of all the possible places in the world to study? So three things. Number one, Mark Rutland, the former president. Number two, Dr. Brad Young, who created, who helped form and expanded the Judaic Christian Studies program at Oral Roberts University. And number three is I wanted to make a contribution to the Hebraic roots of the Holy Spirit academically in the uh, relationship between Jews and Christians. So put all those three things together with a little bit of the voice of God saying to me, you got to go, uh, then you got to go. That's it. So well, you're, uh, you're kind, that's you're- how I got in. You're kind of like a charismatic Orthodox Jew. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, the, <laughs> we have a few of them. You can, we have a joke here in Israel. So if Dr. Phaedra Shapiro is an Orthodox Jewish woman involved in Jewish Christian relations. And the joke is, is that I call her a closet Catholic and she calls me an open charismatic. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, what a, listen, one of the greatest joys of my life is when we get to bring uh, Christians, believers over to Israel, and then you get to teach the Torah and the prophets from a biblical perspective and even teach out of the New Testament. And all the time, my uh, my blessed travelers and our partners, when they come back, they say, man, how's David Nakrutman doing? So thank you for doing something very much outside of what most Orthodox Jews would be comfortable doing. And thank you for building that bridge what you've done over the last decade or so, David, is just remarkable. And I and our Together for Israel partners commend you. Thank you very much. You know, over, you know, doing this for 23 years has been an incredible privilege and honor to serve something that's greater than me and to sort of make the gap a little closer between Jews and Christians. Obviously, there's differences, and, and those differences will be the mystery between our two faith communities. But because of your willingness to be open and our side also to be open and embrace this relationship that's miraculous. The probably the second greatest miracle next to the creation of the state of Israel is the Rapashma, the reconciliation between Jews and Christians. So for me, I'm just one of those people who are advancing the kingdom of God, whose specific calling is between Jews and Christians to make this the best way I could say this for me from the Jewish side of it is I can't be who I am as a Jew living in Israel and stewarding this land without you. Oh, amazing. Because uh, because at the end of the day, the kingdom of God is not a VIP exclusive club. It's not about an American Express or a Chase Sapphire card. Uh, it's really at the end of the day, those who believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob coming together, celebrating the mystery of our, of our diversity, but also understanding the unity between our faith communities and how great is that, that we're able to do that with a reborn Israel and we're 70, almost we're 76 years in to this redemptive fast track process of everything. And knowing you for more than a decade, I think you, you have a memory lapse, Scott. We know each other for just, I think for 15, 14, 15 years Amazing. at least. Amazing. And uh, you met me in my second chapter of Jewish Christian relations when I was the former executive director for the Center for Jewish Christian Understanding Cooperation. But now you've been through with me into the transition of my chapter three as the executive director for the Isaiah Projects, which is really uh, an organization dedicated to creating Hebraic roots resources for Christians to understand the roots of their faith. And I just want to thank you, A, just for being a personal friend. Not only are you the greatest barista I have ever met in the Christian world, <laughs> that's an inside joke with Scott Schwartz's house, makes me the best cup of coffee ever. But just being a friend and and trying as well on on the other side to come closer to the Jewish side to make that gap a little a little smaller, so we can actually do the work of God together. And that's the I and I want to make this very clear to the people who are listening. You've been very vital to the Isaiah projects on the ground activities because I I put all the education stuff on the side on October eighth and really went on the ground providing help for our first responders, rebuilding the kibbutzim next to the Gaza border. Uh, you actually helped with the security 
for the Nova site where over 350 people were massacred on October 7th. Uh, they were at a, uh, at a festival, a music festival, and Hamas came in. And that area needed to be secured. And you said, I'm with you, David. So I just I want to point out to your listeners how close, and not only is the relationship personally, but what you've done to help Israel out on the ground uh, in over 300 days with the war. Well, thank you for pointing that out. I must say that those that are watching um, are there, there are partners. And David, I always say this, that I get to be the conduit of the generosity of Christians around the world who love Israel and who love the God of Israel. That's the greatest privilege of my life. And being able to partner with you on some of these things, bro, just blesses me beyond measure. You're a man that I trust implicitly. And I'm so thankful for the things that we've been able to do in the past. And you just got in touch with me yesterday and told me about an opportunity because friends, Listen, David is on the ground in Israel. I'm in the United States. I, I'm, I'm in touch with people in Israel almost daily. Since October 7th, there have been many thousands and tens of thousands of people who've been displaced in Israel, whether close to Gaza or on the northern border of Lebanon, where people have been living outside of their homes simply so that they can live in relative peace with their children. And as things are continuing to heat up in Israel, Together for Israel is committed to standing with our brothers and sisters in Israel. And we couldn't do this without you. David reached out to me yesterday and told me of an amazing opportunity because people are wanting to return to their uh, their their kibbutzim, their homes, their the kibbutz, community, their their community. They want to return. And there's one specific community, David, that you and I are going to help. I've already committed to doing it. But it's the community of Kerem Shalom. Is that the correct way to pronounce it? Yeah, Kerem Shalom, which means in English, the vineyard of peace. Okay. This so is literally yes. on the Gaza border. On the Gaza border. There's and a... let's just let's just clearly articulate. Let's take less than five minutes, bro. Tell us what happened in that community on the morning of October 7th. So as at all Israeli communities in the Gaza envelope. That means right within the border of Gaza, yeah. you had Hamas that came in, 3,000 of soldiers or, and this terrorist group sending in their military into um, into the Gaza area, Gaza envelope area. You heard, you've heard of Kibbutz Beri, you heard of Kfar Aza. These are, these are communities that not only you have helped to rebuild the lives of people who were uh, who survived that massacre that happened in their own individual kibbutzim. Uh, but they're probably the best known in the media as far as the devastation that happened on October 7th. But there are other kibbutzim that some did not get as devastated, but the, the peril and the danger of that moment on October 7th was real for many people. And imagine you're at the Egyptian Gaza Israeli border. That's where Karim Shalom is situated and then you have Hamas breaking through and almost overtaking Karim Shalom to such a degree and I sent you video footage they're inside the kibbutz they're shooting around into civilian homes um, we had a civilian who was literally holding on to their bomb shelter door and a Hamas a terrorist put a, a bomb that uh, was so powerful, it took off the, the 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 father's hand, three fingers on another hand, but he managed to survive, and he was able to light the Hanukkah uh, lights a few months later after he recovered with the, the remaining hand uh, and singing the song that we are being able to be victorious. So, so here's, a, here's a family went through a traumatic event, but not only that, I would say the people who defended the kibbutz to ensure that the safety and security of them, they went out and they were on the ground defending, and some of them did die in the process of defending Karim Shalom. But they've been evacuated since October 7th to a small community. They originally were in hotels, and then in November, they moved to a small community 35 kilometers from Beersheba, and that's where they are right now. Karim Shalom is a military zone. What's famous about Karim Shalom is they're literally at the crossing between Israel 
and Gaza where humanitarian aid trucks go in and out all the time. I know there's this whole thing about humanitarian aid. Israel has been delivering it. But that's where the kibbutz is located. And since October 7th, they haven't been home and they don't feel safe enough to come home. So because of our relationship with the rebuilding division for the Israel Defense Forces, and they were the ones who gives, gives us the projects where the government or the IDF are not giving monies as a priority to right now, because we are in a four-pronged war with Hezbollah, Hamas, the Houthis, uh, and obviously uh, we have Syria to deal with right now and Iran. So it's more than just a four-pronged war. So the priority is very much into the defense that's needed for Israel to protect. And, and some of the monies get allocated to different kibbutz and wishing to rebuild. With Karim Shalom, it's in a difficult position because it is a military zone. That means right now, the people who are living there are units going into train or about to go into into Gaza. Like I, I met with some of the some of our soldiers in Karim Shalom uh, to give them motivation to say hi, to tell them that people are behind you, to provide uh, breathable type of shirts uh, that's necessary for the weather they're in right now. So you know it's but for me to get in, I had to have a envoy bring me into the actual kibbutz. I can't go inside without permission. But because of our relationship, we, we found out that Karim Shalom wants to come back, but they don't feel safe enough to come back until a until security system is put in place. And that's why I called you yesterday saying, we're able to go ahead and, and do this. And, and you said, yes. And I was like, this is incredible. This is a, a God thing. And I just want to say thank you. And that's why I'm here with you right now. Well, this is amazing. And I just wanted our partners around the world to see your face and to hear your voice because I'm making this commitment really without having the funds to do it. We're, I mean, we're going to find the funds, our partners, when they hear of needs like this. David, there's a scripture in the book of Matthew that talks about, I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was sick and you visited me, I was, I was in prison, you came to me. And this really speaks to me uh, and to many of our followers about nations that either choose to bless the nation of Israel or nations that choose to curse the, the people of Israel. And our followers, the ones who follow together for Israel and the ones who partner are doing everything they can to really be obedient to the word, to bless Israel, not looking for anything in return, but simply to fulfill the heart of God where Israel's concerned. Listen, we're called to clothe the naked of any, of any ethnicity. It's not that God loves Israel more than he loves Gaza. He loves the people of the world. He would that none would perish. We, though, are committed to standing with you and the people of Israel, and it's our joy to partner together with you. This is a $40,000 project. We don't have $40,000 unallocated just laying around, but I'm committing to you today that our partners are going to come through. We're going to send these funds. And what I want to do, brother, is every time I come to Israel with a group of people, I want to visit that Nova site where our partners were, were blessed to contribute to put security cams there. I want to visit the Karim Shalom Kibbutz with you uh, just to say, look, this is just one of the small things that we can do, that we can do as Christians to say, we love you and we're standing with you. So from the bottom of my heart, David, thank you for reaching out to me and thank you for being a friend of Christians that builds a bridge between the Christian community and the Jewish community. Without you in my life, I wouldn't get to do so much of what I get to do in Israel. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate it. And I also appreciate that you quoted Matthew chapter 25. I think it's verses 25 through 41 specifically. And the only reason why is because I'm a I'm the advisor for for the chosen, so I had to do some homework in order to be a Jewish advisor to the chosen. Yeah. So I appreciate that, and I appreciate where you're coming from, and 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 just being a friend and standing in the gap for Israel and being a watchman on Israel. But you know, being part of this is more than slogans. It means action on the ground, 
and prayer as well. But at the end of the day, we are we were facing an existential crisis on October 7th, the unity of Israel, along with the partners of the nations, especially with the Christian community, we were able to do so much to help so many. So thank you to for Together for Israel for making all this happen. Ah, you're welcome. And friends, I just want to close this off by saying, if you've been pricked in your heart and you would like to help us with this particular project that we're calling, I'm going to call it the Shalom Project, which is only a part of the name of the community that we're going to be helping, click on the giving link that will be provided. There's a whole list of projects. Click on the Shalom Project. Every penny that we get for this is going to go towards helping enhance the security of this community so that our friends who lived there prior to October 7th can come back and live in peace. I love you. God bless you. Thank you for standing with Together for Israel and David Nekrutman. Thank you for being our friend. Hold on, I got to...